Hello everyone and welcome to my UDK tutorial series. In this particular episode, I'm going to be going over how to import things into UDK and, you know, properly format things so that they will import correctly. It's been a little while since I last made a UDK tutorial video and I do apologize for that, but at any rate, here we are. Um, this has been a long time coming, especially this one. Um, okay, so, first things first, um, I'm not going to be going over any video, like, how to do the programs themselves. I'm just going to be showing you how to import stuff. Now, let me open up Content Browser here, and we click the Import button. You'll see all the different kinds of things that can be accepted by UDK. This is the, this is, these are the kinds of, um, types of files that you've got to convert your stuff into if you want it to work. Now you've got a lot of options in some cases, like the textures. You can do a .bmp, a .float, .pcx, .png, .psd, a .tga. Um, you could even import a full-blown material as a .t3d, but that's all you can do. You can't do like JPEGs. JPEGs, while they are accepted into UDK, are not textures they're something else entirely so don't try so just because you have a jpeg doesn't mean you can just start throwing it into udk you have to make sure that they're in an acceptable format 90 percent of the time people are just going to put stuff into pngs that's like the most commonly used texture type out there because it's used in so many different programs and it works well so just pngs is usually what you're going to use um, but anyway uh, as for your meshes, you've got FBX, really, is pretty much the only option. I mean, you've got speed trees, if you've got those, speed trees. Uh, skeletal meshes, .pcx. You have a .ase and .t3d. But FBX is the most commonly used, just like PNG. Um, and Blender, I know for a fact that Blender, the only one that's even going to work with UDK is FBX. So that's probably going to be your best bet there. Um, sound files, as far as sound, it either accepts multi-channel sounds as a dot WAV capital WAV or just accepts uh, your simple WAV wave sounds. Either one, that's what it accepts. Uh, you can do, um, let's see, you, I mean you can import actual Unreal stuff like, you know, packages and trains and stuff like that uh... basically that's that's pretty much about it um, as far as what it's going to accept so first things first let's uh... let's go to textures so let me pull up uh... paint real quick like paint because it's easier than photoshop alright so if i take picture that I've got in here already. UDK is a little bit finicky with textures. You've got to make sure that they're in a special format. All you really have to do is just make sure that the, there's the right number of pixels on like the height and width. The actual size of the image doesn't matter all that much. I mean obviously the larger the image is the more high qual high quality it's going to be because as you stretch because if you stretch the image out it's just going to get l less uh, it's going to get more and more blurry so but you're going to need to make sure that's resized so that the pixel count for the horizontal and vertical is to a power of two that's all you have to do um, usually people put them sideways or in squares either way they'll import just fine at UDK you just need to make sure that they're to a power of two Sometimes I've encountered like some cases where the image is not wanting to work right. Just usually, if you just kind of keep fiddling with the sizes, it'll be fine. Um, I'll try again though. Try avoiding making it larger. For instance, in this case, I the image I I stretched out. I, I kind of reduced the size a little bit to get it to that um, power of two. Because you could either reduce it or increase the size. You usually want to reduce it so it keeps the quality. Uh, let me let me take an image I haven't actually done already. These metal sheets here. Okay. So this is 1,032 to 774. 
So I could do 1024. What I can do is I can go to 1024 by 512. Click OK, and there we go. So it gets a little smaller, but it also doesn't get blurry. It keeps the quality. If you made it larger, because I could go up to 2048 by 1024, it would uh, it would look like this if I did that. So it's going to keep the aspect ratio 24. So you can't really tell it too much on this image, but it starts to get a little bit grainy and lose a little bit of the quality that it had the larger that you make them. So just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, this image is a hard one to tell that on. I should have used a better image, but... Uh, actually, I have a better image. Just I know every pro everybody already knows what I'm talking about, but that's okay. I'm just, I want to show anyway. So this, real high quality image. If I increase the size, even really just a little bit, you can start to see it it's kind of blurring a little bit at some points I think okay anyway enough of that so <clears throat> usually it will import as long as you make the dimensions to a power of two if it's not one to import just try kind of changing up the way that you've got it like sometimes uh, you, this is one thing that people get so frustrated at uh, me especially UDK doesn't like textures sometimes. It's very, very particular about the way it accepts textures. So sometimes you may need to try reversing the sizes. Uh, for instance, you know, instead of having the horizontal be whatever it is, switch the horizontal to the vertical and the vertical to the horizontal. Maybe switch it. Maybe make it a cube or uh, not a cube, but a square. Maybe try those different things. If it's still not one to import, it may just not like the picture because it looks ugly and UDK doesn't want it in itself because it thinks the picture's ugly. But I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, if you've got the picture where the dimensions are to a power of two, and, and again, make sure that it's not a percentage, the pixel count, the pixel count needs to be to a power of two. If it's in a power of two, if it's in a PNG, and if the, I mean, if, as long as those two things are good, it should import. If it's not wanting to import after that, there's nothing else I can really tell you. I've had a couple images that just, it, they wouldn't import into UDK. No matter what I tried, no matter what I did, they just wouldn't import. And I, I still to this day can never figure out why they wouldn't. But sometimes you'll just have that happen. And I know that's a terrible thing to say. It's like, but I need this for my project. Um, I mean, it, it's just, sometimes they just don't work. So you can just try like, you know, cre recreating the project and re-exporting it and doing something a little different. Um, I mean, 99% like of the time they will work. There's just a couple few, just uh, UDK hates them for some reason. <sighs> but anyway, uh, so yeah, you just, you have to, unfortunately, it would, it would be so much more helpful if the people who made this would actually give you some sort of error, like, hey, the images are not to a power of two, but all it says is the import failed. So usually that's the problem, but if it's not... And then you'll know, but you can just, I'll show you an example. If I click uh, OK here, oh. Oh, that's a JPEG. That's why that allowed it to work. I was like, that eh, shouldn't have worked. But that's another thing. You, a lot of the time you'll download images off of the internet and they will be JPEGs. They don't need to be JPEGs. Uh this one. Oh, that's a JPEG. Okay, whatever. Never mind. Moving on to... Sorry, I'm a little scatterbrained today. <sighs> Please forgive me. But I will show you how to do the sound files. Pretty, pretty simple. Uh, I'm just going to do a bit of recording. Da, 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 da. Talking, talking, talking. Recording my voice. Whatever. Um, and this is just Audacity. This is a free program to use. You know, whatever. You and this, a lot of the stuff I'm showing you, this will work for any program, um, really. So you can just transfer that over to whatever you're using. Now, file export. All I need this to be is just a dot 
wave. And this is like, again, 90% of the time that's what you're going to be using. It's the most commonly used file type. That's why they have it as an import. Sound files are really simple to do. It, 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 you just, you kind of just make them and you just throw them in UDK and they'll be fine. Um, but oh, you just, you need to make sure it's a dot wave. Uh, it'll either accept all capital, like W, a V all caps or W A V all lowercase. W A V all caps is usually a multi channel sound though, so there's a bit of a difference between the two. So there's that. Uh pretty simple for the uh sound files. The other one, and really the last one that we have to worry about, is with Blender. Blender is a little bit different. Uh, I mean, the textures are really the worst things. So if you can get your textures to work fine, everything else is going to be just fine. Those are the worst in, to import. And none of, none, of, none of them are really a problem. But I will give you a little bit of advice as far as with Blender. Uh, for whatever reason, UDK, whenever importing um, meshes, and I don't know to this day, I'm not sure if it's only with Blender or if it's with other programs too, like Autodesk or something. Uh, not, yeah, Autodesk. I, I don't know. No, Autodesk is the name of the company. It's 3ds Max. No, is it? No, it's Maya. Maya. I'm sorry. I apologize again. Scatterbrained. I don't know if it's with Blender or if it's other uh, 3D modeling programs too. But whenever you import meshes into UDK, they'll be like really tiny. Not just like small, but like really tiny. Uh, and you have to scale them up by at least like a hundred. And whenever you do that, if I go into UDK here and show you this, if I click on this cube right here, right, the widget, this little movement widget, is in the very center of this cube. And it's easy to move right now, right? But if I scale this up by, let's go 10, right? It's very large. It's still right in the very, very center. So if I go up to, let's say, a hundred, now I can't even see the cube. I can't. I'm inside the cube. I can't see the cube. I would have to scroll my screen out, out a whole bunch to be able to see it. But the widget is still going to stay right there in the middle, and that's not too big of a deal for a cube. I mean, that's it. It's a good location for where it's going to be. The middle of the cube is in this section. That's good. The way that the widget is positioned is going to be in the center of the object. So you have a, if you have a wheel, it's going to be in the very center of the wheel. Even if there's, even if the widget is positioned in a place where there actually is no mesh, it's going to just try and stay in the center there to give you the best representation of where your thing is going. However, as you scale it up, that center point gets farther and farther away from the rest of the mesh. That's pretty simple logic in this case the center point of where the widget is has stayed in the exact same spot as it was earlier um, because it, it was still that was the center of the cube then this is still the center of the cube because I'm scaling it in every direction but I can't even see the cube at this point this may not seem like a huge problem and it works well in UDK because all of the meshes in UDK are already scaled up by a certain amount. If you if you put any mesh that's in UDK right now or in there right as it is, 90% of the time you're going to be able to use it as is without having to do any scaling because they pre-scaled all of their meshes to a certain size so that they wouldn't have to do a lot of scaling with them afterwards. Now you do have to do some scaling at some points to just get them to fit right. That that's just going to happen. But there's just there's a window of where it's too much scaling that you need to do, and you know it's fine. There's a pretty delicate window there. If you're having to scale it up to a hundred, that's too much, because and here's my point that I'm trying to been getting, I've been trying to get to for the past hour and a half now. <laughs> if you have weirdly shaped objects like um, I don't know, so, like you have like an archway or something. Sometimes, and it, if it gets a little, it, it can also count if it has a if it gets a little bit offset in um, Blender. The center point of the object is going to be like wherever you set it at, and that's kind of where it's going to have the widget. 
So, you know, I could set it over here and the widget will be there. If that's offset just a little bit and it's not the exact center of the object, as you scale it up, that widget will get farther and farther away from objects. Um, and sometimes even if it's in the exact center and the object's weirdly shaped, it'll, it'll, be, it'll make it difficult to move the object. For instance, an arch. The center of the arch is not going to be at the very top. It's going to be sort of like in the middle somewhere of... Um, let me... I can't think today. I'm just going to get an arch mesh so I can show people. Arch. Like, I don't know, something like this. Just, it's not an arch, but the center point of this is not going to be here. It's going to be somewhere down here because it has to line up with these two. You have to consider that that's part of it. So it's going to be in an empty space. You scale that up a hundred times and your widget's going to be like several yards away from any of the edges of the arch. It's just going to kind of be hanging there in space. It can kind of make it difficult to move at times. So that was that was my point. If just you scale it up in Blender and or whatever other 3D modeling program that you're using and it'll kind of help alleviate that whole problem of having to scale it up a massive amount of times to make it work. Um, okay, I apologize that was sort of a really bad explanation and long-winded and coming. There it is. Uh, I need to get more rest. <laughs> Can't think straight. Okay. Anyway, uh, to scale stuff up in Blender, if you need to know how, you have the scale button over here to the left side. Whoop, right over here. Click the scale button and then you can just move your mouse or you can just start typing numbers. It's kind of weird, but you can scale it like that. Or you can scale it in post. If you go to file and then export. So we don't want to do uh, FBX. And you can do a scaling right here, which is usually what I would recommend doing so you're not actually having to change your actual mesh and scale that up because that can be kind of weird. So just scale it up by about 100 or so, and you should be good to go. All right, so that's what I meant to say. I, again, I apologize for the fact that it took me so long to get to that point. Uh, I've got a lot going on right now, so. Okay, uh, let's see. So, meshes are pretty simple to uh, import. You don't really require other much other than just kind of sticking it in there. It accepts pretty much all kinds of meshes. Uh, that's pretty much all you have to really do is just kind of change that up a bit. Now, what I'm going to look at now is sort of imp actually importing some of this stuff and the options that are involved. So every single time that you import something you're going to have a package. And the package is more or less, you could think of it like a folder. So the, the other package names that we have here, you can see, they're all of the stuff that's down here on this side. Um, I can't click over there now, but it's all the stuff that's on kind of the side here. It's how it's organized in UDK. And you can see, you know, that the way they put things down here, um, Castle HUD, you've got, you know, your core, you've got E3 demo stuff, they, you know, editor materials, editor meshes, stuff like that. So they've got everything organized in these folders. And you'll want to do that for your project. You can't just be putting stuff in my package continuously. Because if you have a game, like a, any game, is going to require a massive amount of assets. And they may, you may not even have that many meshes or materials. But you have to consider that you, you're having to put meshes, sounds, materials, um, skeletal meshes, uh, possibly, possibly speed trees if you're using those, maybe not, uh, any pre-made like uh, cutscenes, if you have cutscenes that you rendered out in another program that you're putting in there, you have to put all that stuff in there. You've got a lot of different kinds of things that you're putting all in one folder. You want to organize it. Usually, if you have a large group of people and a team, you'll have like, you know, you'll have like a project manager or something that's kind of making sure that, that everything's kind of straightened away, you know, and they're, of course, I mean, they're overseeing, they're managing the project. They may not be managing 
like it that much where they're making folders and stuff but you, you'll have someone project manager was a terrible example that's uh, you'll, but you'll you'll have someone to kind of be in charge of making sure that everything's organized. Because trust me, I have just been lazy and been like, I'm um, uh, don't worry about making package now or name and stuff, and I just kind of just throw stuff in there, and then I can't find it later because you ha you can't search for it and you can't figure out what folder it's in and all that stuff. Anyway, uh, so name your package appropriately. Uh, then name obviously whatever it is that you're putting in here. You can't use spaces uh, in UDK. You can use underscores, which is often what people use. They just use underscores in replace of the spaces. Um, so they can reserve hyphens for, you know, using them what hyphens are actually used for. Because underscores you actually never need in a normal sentence. So they'll replace it with the spaces. Anyway, uh, this is specifically for material, so you have a different bunch of different options down here you can use to click. You can actually pre-create a material from a like a PNG that you're importing. I typically don't do this, and here's why. It's useful, yes, because then you don't have to worry about having to, you know, you know, right-click it and then do create new material and hook up the material to the right thing and then save it. But for whatever reason, it'll it'll do all that for you. It'll name it, and then it'll have the exact same name that you put up in the name slot, but just material afterwards. But then it won't work. You have to still go inside of it, and then save it, and then exit. So it kind of defeats the entire purpose of saving the material. Because if you have to open it up anyway, it you know it it's just a couple extra seconds to just drag and drop the thing in there and hook it up and then save it. So I, I don't really find it being that much use that useful because it, it just doesn't work for whatever reason anyway um but that's there if you want it and you've got all your different just kind of options and settings that you can set you know if you have like diffusion or mission or if it's two-sided and all of this fancy stuff that i don't know anything about because i'm not an artsy person <laughs> so i'm just trying to make you think that i know a lot about it i don't know all that much. Uh, dither mipmapped alpha. Oh yeah, that's used for you know doing your alpha and your mip mapping and you know dithering it because dithering is important. I have absolutely no idea what that is, but you can check it if you need it because you know if basically if you know what these options are, then you'll know whether or not you need them. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Uh, okay, moving on. Skeletal meshes or static meshes rather click okay so same concept package name I grouping is sort of like a it's sort of like a package it's you don't have to put a group in there but you can kind of assign a group kind of say that this is part of this number of items so you know say you have like you you make a bunch of buildings like just building meshes you know you can say this is the group of houses this is the group of like businesses then you can all have that under the package of buildings if you wanted to do that anyway uh, name just create and import type static or skeletal mesh you've got some options for your skeletal meshes of whether or not to keep animations uh, you know that stuff and the other than the rest of this stuff like material imp import materials textures and normal maps I usually keep off because first of all I've had some bugs where it wasn't wanting to import that kind of stuff correctly. Uh it did import it but it wasn't it wasn't working correctly um importing that with the mesh. And secondly, personally I just prefer to see like to make a material and then apply the material to the mesh in game rather than have the mesh already have all of that stuff inherently part of it. Because if you decide you want to change it, then you'll have a problem because the mesh itself already has a texture. Um, I mean, you can overlay a new texture on top of it, but it, it just, personally, I kind of like doing it where, you know, you don't import that stuff, and you can just apply it later. Um, but again, I've also had some issues where it wasn't wanting to work correctly, importing the textures and normal maps and all that and materials and all that with the mesh. So I just do it later. Okay. Uh, finally, combine meshes. This one, 
is incredibly useful. I wanted to talk about it last because it's very useful. Now, the blender, the the way Blender works, and I imagine this is the same for all, you know, 3D modeling programs. I just haven't, you know, I. I haven't had the time to just happen, you know, kind of go out and get about 700 spare dollars to spend on a 3D modeling program. Um, so that's why I only know about Blender. But the uh, the way I know the way Blender works is you can actually create several meshes inside one file. So you may have a file that says buildings, or or you may have a file that says house. But in that file that has house, you could have a mesh for a door, a mesh for a window, a mesh for a couch, a mesh for a roof, a mesh for walls, you know, a mesh for all of these different things, but it's all in one file. This is where the combined meshes option comes in handy, because UDK can see this, and it can say, okay, do you want to put these all as one giant mesh, and it just, you know, it would be one mesh, and it, it it wouldn't be like where you could undo it at a later date. They would literally just be all fused together, and if you move one, you move them all. Or you could just not combine them, and you will import each one of those separately as their own separate piece. What you can do is actually import the same file twice. So in the example of the house, you import the house one time you combine all of the all of the meshes you know so you you know you don't check this you leave it unchecked and then you have doors you have windows you have you know your walls roofs any furniture whatever you have all of that as separate files then you do it again and you do check this like this then you have the house as a whole so what you can do is you can say so you know maybe you're making a neighborhood for like an RPG or something well, typically, you don't spend the time, like for an RPG, if you have someone go in a neighborhood, like they're on a quest, they're supposed to go find this person's house and go talk to them, you're not going to allow the person to just roll up into every house that they see and just go inside that person's house and do stuff. You, you, you know, you're going to have the doors closed, unless you want the person to be able to go in every house, in which case you would have a lot of work cut out for you. But usually you're just going to have the houses standing there. And you'll have it, you know, you'll, it'll look nice. You may have people doing stuff on the inside. But you're not going to need the door to open or something like that. So you could just have the whole house mesh be there. You just stick the house mesh in there and you move on. Or you could, in the case of the house that you need to be able to be fully functional with, you know, opening doors and, you know, um, opening windows and stuff like that, you have each individual mesh that you need to move separately you can just sort of build the house so think of it like you have a mesh for all of the individual pieces and then the mesh itself I've actually seen some examples of this in the UDK um, content browser already from the uh, the Unreal Tournament stuff uh, let's see if I can find it I can't remember what the thing was called if I look real quick I'll probably see it somewhere um, it was like a console type thing this this right here so this is its own mesh right here but it's a bunch it's a combination of a whole bunch of other meshes that are already in here so you can actually see they have the control panel separately they have the little storage tank separately all of the pipes are separate this little platform piece down here is its own separate thing and all that stuff. So you can actually place the entire thing as a whole down. And then you can also place the individual pieces. Um, so that's just sort of a point that I wanted to make that it's really useful to be able to use that check, that combined meshes feature um, whenever you're importing something that has a whole bunch of individual pieces with it. So just remember that that's there. And also knowing that you can actually create your your models in such a way that allow you to do that because some people you know they make good models and stuff but they don't really know that you could like make each thing as a separate model and then use that feature in UZK to just split them all up and then also re-import the whole thing so that you have everything there instead of just creating one mesh with you know that stuff and and sometimes even you would just have to import like a whole bunch of different files and that gets really annoying so you could even just 
have like a file called building meshes and have like three different houses and like a office building and just all these different things as their own separate things. Um, of course, that wouldn't work entirely well if you had the combined meshes feature unless you laid them all out in the position that they were supposed to be. And you have like the entire, like an entire little village as one giant mesh. You could do that technically. I won't, you know, I, I won't get into how difficult it would be to make a material fit all of that stuff, but, you know, it's entirely possible. So, anyway, just keep that in mind. That is, however, basically all there is to importing. I did it like an entire 30-minute tutorial on importing when I saw someone else who did just like a 5-minute, here's what you click, here's what to do uh, tutorial, but, eh. That's me, I guess. I kind of tend to ramble on and give way too many details that are absolutely necessary. But I also like to make sure that everybody understands stuff. Because a lot of the time, I'll see like a five-minute tutorial on, here's how to import textures into UDK. And they just change up a couple things with the picture and they move on. And they're not really explaining why they're doing all of this. And, you know, they're not, you know, all of this kind of stuff. So, anyway, long story short, long tutorial, I know. I can make it shorter if... Uh, people were complaining but um, that's that's pretty much it to importing stuff in UDK I may at some point in the future kind of go into like completely how to start from scratch of I want to make this texture appear on this object in UDK how do I start actually making that texture in something like Photoshop and then go through doing that and then you know um, how to import it into UDK and rig it up and apply it but I'm not all that good at 3D modeling or doing textures as of yet. Uh, I'm still trying to work on getting better doing that, so that may be a little farther off in the future before I do like a full asset creation thing. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll uh, see you all in another video.